Welcome back to Planet Time for some more JoJo's Bizarre Adventure coverage. I'm here with my buddy, Dio Catface Killer. JoJo! Dio! We're not doing that again. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm sure we burst you guys' eardrums and we apologize. We do. So, guys, as you can see in the title, we're going to be talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 2, the anime manga called Battle Tendency, which sometimes I confuse for Battle Frequency. I don't know what's wrong with me, but... I got it written on the my iPad, so I'm not gonna mess it up, Catface. Correct me if I mess up again. Okay, I wasn't gonna say anything if you until you messed up, but uh, I mean, okay. you, you won't put yourself out like of that. Of course, That's I cool. bet these people know ahead of time that I'm gonna fuck up. But anyway, guys, first of all, Battle Tendency covers the first part of the anime from episodes nine to twenty-six. I was a little bit confused why they didn't separate them as animes because some people have been confused about this being part one and part two together in the anime package i'm talking about only oh okay because so when i watched it on uh you know when I was streaming on the internet it was separated so i uh, that's news to me yeah they said it in a box pack and it's just the 126 episodes when you watch it they do put up the title but some when i was talking to some people and referring to some of them they, they were looking for battle tendency so i couldn't find it anyway sorry guys if i'm confusing you i do apologize it's just a little i'm a little bit perplexed on the market in there Anyway, so we're talking about part two. Most of you fans already know about this. And, oh boy, I want you to talk about the manga first and your experiences with Battle Tendency. And, you know, as you watched it, I want to hear your thoughts on the manga versus the anime. Again. I'm glad we're going to focus a little bit more on the manga versus the anime because you want to talk about A Tale of Two Cities. I did not like this manga that much, this story arc in the manga. Okay. But this is... There could be many factors. I'm not sure what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but... One, I read this like nine years ago when I was first starting to read a bunch of manga. So that could be part of it. Could be I was younger. I It could be the protagonist quirks don't translate very well on panel versus animated. I don't know. Mm. I, this was my least favorite story arc in the manga. Now, watching it, though, I didn't have any of the problems. I was like dreading this. And then I watched it and I just watched it through like anything else I liked. And I liked it. I mean, it it was funny. It was entertaining. The action was good. The protagonist's quirks didn't bother me. Um, I just, I don't know what it was. It, it's really weird. And I'm, I know how much you love being affected by the things I say early on in a recording. I'm going to come out and say, Joseph Joestar, my favorite JoJo. Same. Same. He's fucking, he's fucking great. I love him. He's like, he's witty. He's clever. In a corner, he's going to fucking die. He figures something out, like, you know, he pulls it out of his ass. It's it's really nice to watch. I'll let you... Can you just give us a plot of this one following the first part to see how the story ushers in this time, if you don't mind? So, the last story arc, Phantom Blood, was uh, the late 1800s. Joseph Joestar is Jonathan Joestar's grandson. So, it's, you know, it went ahead a bit in time. It's in the 1930s. Yeah. And uh, something we actually did not say in um, Phantom Blood is that's set in England. And a little bit, you know, they go around Europe a little bit, but it's mostly in England. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Correct. Uh, I actually forgot to say, one of the things I really like about Jodo's Bizarre Adventure is they go around the world. So Hmm. this one is, um, now that I've said, you know, it was based in England, the English Joseph Joestar goes to America and he also goes to Mexico. So that's pretty neat. And what happens is um, the allies of his grandfather shows up and, you know, he seems like he's friendly, but he turns out to be bad. He actually turned out to be a vampire. And it's revealed that there's um, guys stuck in like a stone pillar or something and they think they're vampires too. Yeah. And, And that's really basically, you shouldn't be fucking around with this. But scientists fuck around with it, and that's just, that's really the storyline. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll tell off what you're just saying because I thought this was very interesting because, as you said, it picks up there, but it clears up the whole thing with Dio in the first part and that bloody mask because in that first part they never explain anything about that mask, that vampire mask, why Joel just one had it. So in this second part here, you get to know more of the origin of the mask because that's the bigger plot, and I was more surprised that. I thought, because Dio doesn't exactly die in that first part. So in this part, I thought, okay, Dio didn't die. He's going to be in the second part. 
But no, this story focuses on the people who kind of created the mask and these guys are completely new antagonists. They seem even more deadly than Dio. There seems to be more of them because there was just Dio in that first part. This second part's got three people that are even way more powerful than Dio. And this guy, which is Joe's with Joe Star, is much more charismatic than uh, Jonathan. He is funny, he's witty, he's got quips, he's a very three-dimensional character. He is vain. He look, man, this guy was absolutely entrancing to watch. He's just he was fourth wall breaking. And I have to say, man, the English dub on top of that made this uh uh just a marvelous watch. And uh, you know, there's no point. It's a series again, it's a series of battles. Joe you know, Joseph's fighting the pillar man. But one of the greatest things about this as well is not only Jojo is a phenomenal main character, but the bad guys actually got some honor to them. They've actually, they're evil, don't get me wrong, but a lot of times they fight with honor and they have certain conversations. I was like, you know what? These guys are not your typical bad guys. They have a past, which is what he gets into. And when Jojo fights them eventually, the battles have a little bit of, um, I don't want to say emotion to them, but I cared about the battles. I cared for Jojo winning. But I'm just saying, I thought, oh, you know, this. I just I just don't want this bad guy to win. I, you know, you know I, I want to see him do his moves. And except for the very last bad guy, who actually was awesome as a, as a proper yeah, villain. He was a great arch villain. He was a fantastic super villain. He made him and Dio were great with this guy and something else. But my God, man, this was the pinnacle. This was just great. The only negative, I'm going to get into more detail. I want you to speak in a minute. The only negative I have are the side characters. A lot of them, I'm just very disappointed because there's not, there's not a lot of them. Actually, the side characters are few. Just like the first part, it's only like two or f- three or four. They come and go. There's only that like one that's like JoJo's. And yeah, his, like, his, his buddy yeah. uh, is really the only main one. I mean, there's a his trainer is kind of important too, but otherwise everybody else is just kind of filler. Yeah, and that really let me down because obviously again I hate to say it, watching Star Wars Crusades, which is a, a team and they're all battles. This one I'm like, okay, Jojo. It reminded me of Fist of North Star, where you know Ken's the main character, but there was also Ray, the guy. Who did, I don't know you might not remember. Uh, he does his thing with his hands and he has his battle, and you, you know Jojo's going to take center stage. But I wanted to see these other characters just have their one or two. These other characters, man, damn, boy. They got ripped apart in the stupidest way. And even that secondary character, he... He fucked up, yeah. He, you know, he, he went away in a very respectable way. But I thought the, the manga did him wrong. I'm like, man, you can't, this guy, you know, he's training with Jojo. This guy, in the beginning, this guy is even more enhanced than Jojo. And I know the main character is going to be nerfed. I know the main character is going to be better. But, man, this guy, as soon as Jojo comes in, this guy's like, oh, I know more than you, Jojo. And he kind of... Fox him a little bit. But as soon as Jojo starts training, this guy is just swept to the side completely. Yeah, he literally, like, the, well, shortly into the training, which I want to come out and say, one of the big pitfalls of Shonen anything is dragging out training and everything. This one is just like, oh, yeah, they train. <laughs> that's kind of it. You see some shots of it, and that's about it. Oh, man, that was, and that was hella fun. And it, the training was, like you said, it was short. It was fun. They fast-forwarded some. It's, I mean, I have, to, I have to nitpick. So you guys have to do it. I mean, near the end of their training, they had to fight their trainers, and their trainers were perfect. One of them gets annihilated just so Jojo can fight one of the bad guys, and the other one gives up. <laughs> yeah, they, they're they clearly like, they learned how to do their abilities, and then they never trained to the same like. And, and another thing, I have to, man. Oh, my God. Their trainer, Lisa Lisa. My God, man. I'm not going to... There's a Even though we're in the spoiler session, I'm not going to say the main thing about her. I'm just going to say... She's meant to be the protector of the stone, which is what the bad guy's looking for. The stone gets stolen from her when she's taking a fucking bath. It was kind of sad, yeah. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I mean, you're meant to be the trainer. You're putting Jojo through all these trials. Meanwhile, it's not even that she gets beaten up in the song. She's literally taking a bath and then someone nicks it from her and Jojo has to kind of fight. She doesn't do, she doesn't do any fighting until the very end when she still gets fucked over anyway. I was just like... Wow, man! Look, I'm just I'm putting all the negative out there first, cause oh, don't get me wrong, I fuck. It's a, it's it's not a big negative. I mean, it sounds kind of like it, cause you're blowing off a lot of steam, but it's yeah. really not that big of a deal. Oh man, I fucking love this. And let me tell you something, man. This one character makes up for all the all the negatives, and there's only one last negative I have to say 
But to be honest with you, this is probably a manga thing. And I think they started to play into it. I think this show, apart from Yu-Gi-Oh! Apart from Yu-Gi-Oh! This is a show with the most call-outs for attacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything, Everything they do, they call out. Every little thing. But it, it gets to the point I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. But Jojo has this one funny quirk where he predicts what other characters are going to say. He can kind of read their minds. And it is hilarious. I actually, I fucking hated that in the manga. I don't know if it's like a panel translation versus animated. But when I was watching it, I was like, uh, this this used to really bother me. Why don't why doesn't it bother me anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Man, let me tell you something. And I, I, I'm I, I'm nearly finished. I said, if I want to say the last battle is so fucking awesome. The it's last epic. battle it's is like everybody throws a word around. It's fucking epic. I, I was like, do I need to watch any more? Because it 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 was the perfect. The boss was the, I don't want to ruin it. I'm not even going to ruin it for anyone. It was like the perfect final battle. The stakes were at the highest it could possibly be. I said to myself, look, man, you built this bike up so much. I will not be satisfied with this ending. This guy can't be beat. And the way it ended, I just clapped. I nearly had a tear in my eye. That was fucking hell. It was just, I love this. I love this. This saga, honestly, I gave him my negatives. I loved it, old boy. So, and the funny thing is, you said that you had so much problem with the manga, but you watched the anime, and you obviously you you enjoyed it a lot more as well. Yeah, I did. I really loved it. I mean, for one, like I said, I didn't really care for the character. But now he's my favorite fucking JoJo. And, you know, there's there was a specific time where he, he even says, "I know how my grandfather died. I'm not gonna die that way." And he just learned. He learned very few times you hear a character say, "I learned from mistakes." And there was a lot of times, even the enemies were like, "JoJo, you sneaky devil! I know you got a backup plan." And he'll say, yeah, well, I do. And he fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like a weaselly little shit, but I love that about him. Oh, man. He was, he's one of my favorite anime characters now. Just because he's clever. And it's not just... You know, there's, there's a lot of people um, in the anime community now say the writer, you know, he, um, plot armor. You plot armor your character. So, like Goku, he's plot armor. He's always going to win. It's always going to be some kind of convenience. It's always going to be some spirit bomb. But this Jojo, Jojo Joestar... He's creative. He actually thinks his way out. And the very last battle he has is a testament. So when it came down to it, he had to come out to his ingenuity to win. And even though, even for anime, the pros of was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. He made it work. And I'm like, you know what, man? That 1% chance that he had to win, he found it, he did it, and he did it. And I was like... And then when the show ended, it alluded to Star Wars Crusaders. And I was like, wow, man, this is the best Joe. This is the best Jonathan Joe. Joe this is the best Joe on the family. And seeing him as an old man, I'm like, now I know your history. I love you. <laughs> and I'm glad you're on Star Wars Crusaders. He's, I know he's a character. I know when he cut Star Wars Crusaders anyway. So I'm like, I'm going to be glad to watch him. Even though he's an old man in that show. So, you know, he doesn't take center stage. It's just nice to see that this character I watched in the previous, in the previous incarnation has such a rich backstory. He's got charisma. You know, a lot of characters, it seems like they're kind of flat and they're just quote-unquote have charisma because they're the main character in their spotlight. This guy, you, I like him. He made me like him. I think I think if you saw the English dub, you would have loved it even. The English is absolutely fantastic. It is so Dude, funny. Dude, okay, I, I know this is kind of getting sidetracked. You want to talk about English, though? You have to watch... You have to at least try to watch some parts of Stardust Crusaders subbed. It's not in English. It's not in English at all. Oh, at all? No, it's not in English. They have, they've only dubbed uh, these, these two arcs, the first two arcs, just this year. Oh. So I have to watch okay. sub anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. Once in a while, he'll use like English phrases because he is English, right? Yeah. And it's just so funny in Japanese. <laughs> it's so fucking funny sounding. Oh, man. So, you know, what? it sounds like you had a really good treat. You didn't, because I was going to ask your negatives, but... You didn't enjoy this part of the manga at all, and now you've been more or less converted. Yeah, I mean, what did I not like about it? Um, I mean, besides some of the plot holes you kind of picked out, which I noticed too, it's just, no, I mean, the only thing that I think could have made it better is um, maybe if it was a little longer. But, you know, I'm always a very vocal advocate of shorter and sweeter is better than longer and duller. It would have been absolutely perfect if the other characters were not even... They don't need to be even half as good as Jojo. That's the problem. They show that, oh, Lisa, Lisa, she's such a good character. She had one fight near the end. You never got to see her full potential. That was disappointing. And the other guy, 
he had good potential, even though his moves were bubbles. Which I was like, really bubbles, <laughs> but they were they were awesome bubbles. But he was he's really ingenuitive with yeah. it. I mean, he was, and you know, his death was fantastic. He died like a champ. But I, I really, I felt like he deserved to take one of them down. I felt like he should have at least went down with one of them. But the fact that he didn't even beat one of them, I was like, come on, man, he's the only other character in the show. You know, manga, yeah, the manga guy that did him wrong. I thought the manga guy did him wrong. You know, well, I mean, because I like the character, I kind of get where you're coming from, but. As a reader, as an appreciative person of manga, I'm going to come out and say I actually I appreciate that more than if he had. I mean, because <laughs> the way because the way he died was he fucked up. He he made a critical error at the very last second yeah. and it got him killed. Yeah. So that's something that's not normally done. That's true. When I think honestly, when I think JoJo's and when I think of this uh, author Araki Hirohiko, originality like that it's a very key part of his storytelling is he does stuff other people won't do. Oh man, and I have to say man, these this power in this part the power structure in this anime, what was it called again? Her um Hamon. The Hamon. I really liked it and I already knew the stands were coming up and I'm actually I wasn't the biggest fan of stands. I really wasn't. And we're going to get more into that in the next uh, in the next part. But I, when I watched this I was like, "Oh, and I now you've already told me that I wasn't. I didn't know that stands were going to be forever more after the next part three, which I was like, oh, I thought it was going to be a different power structure every couple. But it, you know, you know, the battles from a, a strategic point are always interesting. I always know that. But I like Hamon. I thought it was nice. I wish I could see it again. You know. I wish it would have continued to go side by side, hand in hand with yeah. stands. Yeah. I don't know what has to be one or the other. You know. Well, maybe it maybe it comes back later on because, like I said, I haven't read the last of course, of course, few arcs, so maybe it does, but I doubt it. Okay, you got anything else? You know, this was actually ten minutes shorter than the last. <laughs> it was a long anime. Oh, <laughs> uh, actually, yeah. You know what? Let's talk about this arc specifically. Out of all the openings I've seen animated, one of my all-time favorite anime openings visually. It's fucking like just like I said. This guy's original. The art style is just fucking phenomenal looking. I love it. I mean, I like the song too, but that the video itself is great. Like, I think if you sat somebody down, like they're like, fucking anime. What? No, that's dumb stuff. It's like, dude, come here, watch this. And you just have them sit there and watch like the opening music video. And then you're like, do you want to check this out? They're probably going to say, yeah, that looked really cool. That that opening is absolutely fantastic. It's so flamboyant, so colorful. I know, actually, people have been posting the new Diamond is Unbreakable one, which I'm not refusing to watch until I get to it. But people are saying that opening's better than that. I haven't seen it yet, so maybe... No, 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 no. Like, we're talking just visually? Yeah. Fucking fantastic. I mean, I can't even think of any other anime opening video that looks better than that one. And by the way, the ending theme is fantastic. Was it? I take, I'll take the round about. Oh, yeah. I think it's uh, a cover, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe. It sounds because it's all English. It's, but it's absolutely the, the, yeah, the opening outro. Absolutely fantastic. And oh, boy, don't forget. Brought to you by David Productions. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck you, David. <laughs> Why? Why didn't he call himself something else? I get an anime studio, David. David Productions, the best anime studio in the business. I, I won't argue that. I mean, <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. I was just joking, people. I'm gonna get hate if I if I say that. No, 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 no. These guys are good at what they're doing, and I really like. I wish there was companies just focused on one project, and that's that's just really great. So, um, oh, and if you guys want to know my, here's my rating for Jojo's Adventure Part Two. My rating is, I've already bought the DVD set. It's on Amazon, in my way, and it's going in my Hall of Fame. Wow. Hall of Fame, man. You like this stuff way more than I do. I'm kind of surprised because this is a Hall of Fame title for me, like the first four or five story arcs. I, I'm going to go with like uh, a high solid B. I mean, it's... You son I of enjoyed, a bitch! <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. I especially, I love the protagonist. There's so many things I like about it, but it's... For what it is, it's really good, which is, you know, a shonen battle-centered power creep sort of action adventure i mean there's a lot of action a lot of adventure you know we just flipped our ratings right that's what i rated for the last ones <laughs> it's, yeah actually we kind of did but i mean if we're talking about the story arc i think i said high watchable uh, it's just like the first four oh, yeah, or five story arcs is hall of fame for me altogether. okay okay yeah 
I think it, it kind of lacks depth on a storytelling level and some of the characters and stuff, and that kind of yeah. weighs it down. Of course, of course. But it's just the entertainment level is too high. Oh, yeah. Entertainment-wise, whoa, it was way up there. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to give us some nuances. She's never seen Joe Double Star She's going to love this. Yeah, she's going to love that shit. And I got a great deal because I, I got part one and part two in the one anime box set in English, and it was very cheap. I mean, wow, guys. If you haven't seen JoJo's World Adventure and you're not even a fan of anime, this is, I think this is a very, very easy um, gateway anime, even though it is, you'll know within an hour of watching either part if you're into it. But I think, I think it's very accessible. I think, yeah, I think a casual watcher can fucking watch it and appreciate it. Well, there you go. I think everything that we can say is there to be said. So, you know, the next podcast is definitely... The next podcast for JoJo has to be long because it's a 48 episode arc. They extended it from the first half. We've got to talk about the comparisons from the old Stardust and the new Stardust and you've got to talk about the manga. And this is Stardust Crusaders is like, you know, it's the first kind of... Uh, oh, I think that got JoJo the biggest awareness. Is, is that right? Yeah, it's what put it on the map. Yeah, I mean, that character, that JoJo is the one... If you did JoJo's Blood Adventure, that JoJo is the one that come up in the Google search first. Oh yeah, by, by a wide margin. So there you go, some people. Part two, done. We're going to come back with part three in a couple of weeks. I'm going to watch it ASAP. I do want to sit back and enjoy it. And we are going to, you know, I'm really glad we're doing this in parts because if we combine it all together, they would have been very scatterbrained. I really do feel like we would have been jumping here and there and, you know. And even well, maybe now. that's maybe that was a problem with the original recording too because even though you only saw the Stardust, I had to keep jumping around to all the story arcs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go, guys. If you like the conversation, if you've got any thoughts on this part of JoJo as well, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Hit that like button if you like the video, if you like our discussion on JoJo anime in particular, or any of the other things you see on the right there, all those other annotations. Can you see those? Those those links right there for animation, TV shows, books, the podcast, Year of Looping, all the other stuff we do on Planet Time. We do so many things. I can totally see that all. And you're now going to say, peace. Well, not quite. Did you hit that subscribe button? You've got to get those videos straight to your YouTube feed. See, well, boy, don't forget the subscribe button, son. Oh, my bad, dude. I, I'm already subscribed, so. I don't believe you. Don't be that old boy, guys. Subscribe to the goddamn YouTube channel. Hey, channel. fuck you. I'm subscribed. <laughs> anyway, guys, we got to get out of here. We're getting a bit out of control. We've been on the roll. Two recordings at once, even though you guys didn't see it that way. But anyway, we're out of here. And now I'll say, see you later. You son of a bitch. Peace. <laughs>